Well, let's uh, move on uh, to the other topic was uh, in medical devices. Uh, there was some industry development. One is um, we just saw some recent uh, uh, trial data from the uh, um, uh, Edwards valve, the partner data, and then more recently what we'll talk about now is the FDA gave the green light to begin clinical enrollment in the Medtronic core valve trial. Uh, if you can discuss the core valve uh, trial, how it's designed compared to partner, your, your, your issues about whether it's ethical to randomize and, and, and so forth. Well, your audience, I think, is pretty aware. It's a, the, uh, Edward says a new uh, transcatheter uh, valve that's implanted either through the femoral axis or transapically. And the trial that was just published in the England Journal was just uh, a study of uh, high-risk, inoperable elderly patients with severe extenosis. But if you have something that improves outcomes, so this new valve was implanted and uh, the mortality was significantly reduced. Uh, probably one of the most potent uh, studies that I've seen in, in my career in cardiology. They've got, they, they need uh, five lives treated to save one, so this is really one of the most potent interventions of, of any device or drug that I've seen in my career. Uh, at the same time that Edwards was commercial, it was testing this, this device here in the U.S., uh, um, Medtronic has been testing the core valve, or has tested it in Europe, and now is going to start uh, U.S. trials. Uh, the uh, the strategies, I think, have gone un undergone a great deal of turbulence. Uh, in September, uh, both companies were going to be doing similar kinds of trials, and they were still going to be randomizing these high-risk inoperable patients to medical therapy versus surgery, but versus the valve implant. But now with the with the med with the partner data, uh, many of us feel that it's unethical to randomize those patients to control group. Uh, I and 10 other uh, interventional cardiologists uh, wrote a letter to uh, Bram Zuckerman and Matt Hildman at the FDA telling them that we didn't think it was ethical to continue to randomize those patients to control. And uh, as a result of that and uh, other discussions, I think that the FDA is modifying that approach. So it's still not, as of today, it's not certain what's going to happen, but I think they are listening and, and actually uh, the FDA was quite interested in hearing uh, what the clinicians taking care of these patients were feeling about these trials. Well, that's a new development which you just mentioned. I don't believe that's known. Um, so you, you, did you get some feedback from the FDA? Yeah, uh, no, no, I talked with, talk with Bram Zuckerman and, and they were actually very, uh, very pleased that we had written and that we had called and they wanted to get feedback. They, they were concerned uh, about the, the, the ethics of randomizing in that group, but also they're concerned about safety because the valve had about a 6% 30-day stroke risk. Mm -hmm. and so that's, that's, that's on their mind as to what the safety is and, and is there a way of minimizing the stroke risk. So I think right now it's still, in, as of today, the last of October is still in a state of flux as to what the next trial design is going to be, and I think that both companies are delaying a little until they get the final final trial strategy. But I'm I'm pretty confident that we're going to uh, avoid the need to randomize in these patients in the high risk and applicable patients. I don't think we're going to have to randomize anymore those in the U.S. So what's Core Valve doing right now? Medtronic has the approval. Are they delaying or holding off, or are they actually enrolling now? Or? No, they 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 are they are have a, core valve has approval to start their trial, the two arms, the mm -hmm. surgical arm and the inoperable arm, and I think they're going to continue with the surgical arm as planned. Okay. If there's any change in that, I think that just all the question is in the uh, inoperable group, and, and that comprises about uh, ten percent of the eligible patient population. And uh, St. Jude uh, made a business acquisition uh, with, of AGA Medical, which has several products in your line of work, the uh, uh, patent for aminal valley closure, the left atrial appendage uh, device, and uh, uh, also a um, um, femoral artery device similar. It may be, can you just feel free to say whatever you like about it? Do you use any of those? Uh, some of them are still in trials. Uh, do you think this is a will be a new? AJ yeah, Medical is a very fascinating company. Just that 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 company alone is kind of interesting because it was it was invented by a cardiologist mm -hmm. who was wasn't a very good businessman and then then lost the company to uh, 
an, a German investor and then kind of got it back and he's kind of back into it. So I think it's really fascinating <laughs> to see what's happened to Kurt Amplatz and that's the Amplatz <laughs> and it's called AJ Medical on his name. So he's actually one of the good guys that I think is actually going to win out on this. But uh, the, the company has some really unique products that are night and all shaped, that are preformed. Uh, that uh, go in uh, in sort of a stretch fashion and then get implanted. And very, very novel devices. Uh, they close ASDs and PFOs. Uh, they're vascular plugs that are being used to close uh, AV fistulas, patent ductus. And so there's a wide variety of structural heart disease devices that they've had. Uh, they also have probably uh, the best uh, uh, closure for left atrial appendage which is going to be a huge use for prophylaxis for, to obviate the need of Coumadin or uh, the newer drugs for... That's approved drugs. now or just for humanitarian? No, it's in U.S. trials. No, that, okay. That, that was a, a trial reported that showed um, efficacy for patients who couldn't take Coumadin. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that uh, St. Jude's buying them is really going to put St. Jude's really uh, in a major position. But right now for structural heart disease, uh, it's, it's been primarily uh, Edwards with a huge lead, uh, Medtronic with the deep pockets and their acquisitions of core valve and Venture. And now I think St. Jude is going to be a major player. They also think they're looking at a percutaneous aortic valve. So with that and with, uh, with uh, aging medical, they're going to be a huge player in this space. What do you thought? There's a big uh, potential to treat uh, migraine, uh, and if you close the PFO, uh, is that trial going to ever happen? Do you believe in that? Do you think it's uh, any thoughts on that? Well, I've had a lot of uh, a lot of patients uh, anecdotally. First of all, just on a, on a side note, my wife and three of my kids suffer from migraines. So, so unless you actually have, unless you suffer from migraines or have a family member that suffers from migraines, you have no idea what a royal pain in the behind it is to have a migraine and be, you know, limited. And some of these migraineers have up to 10 days a month where they just can't function. So they, they get off work, they, you know, so anyway, so it's a, it's a huge problem, enormously controversial, a clear mechanism by which holes in the heart or in the, or AV shunts would actually cause migraine has not been established, but there, there have been a couple of studies, this has been going on for 15 years, what uh, Wilmhurst found in Ireland that when uh, uh, people with bends had their, their PFOs closed, two-thirds of them had their migraines eliminated. So there's been some interesting studies. The, the study that was done in England uh, was enormously controversial, uh, sort of plus minus results. And there are two or three other companies that are looking at, at a PFO migraine indication. So it's not, uh, it's not well established, but there's enough interest that I think that there will be a clear answer. It's gonna be about two or three years before we get it. Uh, I've had patients who have had their migraines eliminated. I, I don't close, we, we don't close uh, PFOs for that indication, but when they've had other indications like stroke, uh, they, I, I, they've talked with me and told me. So, so there's enough kind of interest out there that the people that, that do these a lot really think that there is something there. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. But keep it in perspective, mm -hmm. the vast majority of people with migraines don't have PFOs. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, it's a small <coughs> part of the migraine problem. Give them Botox. <laughs> <laughs> that just got approved. I, we were almost going to talk about yeah. that. Uh, well, we can move on.